Good morning, dear colleagues. Thank you very much for the opportunity to present the European perspective on the competence approach for protected areas as seen by the ProPark Foundation for Protected Areas from Romania. I am going to continue the presentation made by Mike Appleton by bringing to you some case studies from Europe, speaking about what is needed to make the competence approach work, and a little bit about new competencies and needs for capacity development. Mike was speaking earlier about the need to have effective organizations to support skilled, professional and committed people in their work for protected areas. That was the driving thought behind the ProPark Foundation for Protected Areas, established 11 years ago with support from WWF and Fauna and Flora International. Our mission is to improve the competencies of people involved directly or indirectly in the management of protected areas through capacity building, model approaches for efficient protected areas, education and awareness raising. One of our key actions was to register the occupation called protected area specialist and develop the occupational standards. This occupation is built on the competencies as defined for staff level three in the Global Register for Competencies. We are offering certified training sessions for the protected area specialist occupation, for rangers and community facilitators. Given the limited resources available for capacity building, time and money, we developed a blended learning approach for the protected area specialist occupation. We have online introductory modules, followed by face-to-face -face training sessions. Additionally, trainees have to work together as a protected area specialist team and develop a protected area management project. ProPark strongly believes that the competence approach is indeed a different approach. It is for us a practitioner's approach. Based on what you can do, defined by sector practitioners, ideally certified and verified, means for us, the ProPark team, that we have to continuously build a valuable network of certified trainers with practical experience. For building capacity for protected area management in a country with 23% of its territory covered with a diverse network of protected areas, an NGO specialized in capacity building is far from enough. For an effective competence-based approach, we need organizational capacity and systemic capacity to support individuals working for protected areas. We need the Ministry of Environment and the recently established National Agency for Protected Areas to step in and build a competence-based protected area management. Now the National Agency for Protected Areas has very limited resources. Numbers of protected area management entities are decreasing and the protected area specialist and ranger certifications are not yet official requirements. We have still a very long way to go on the path of professionalization in Romania, but ProPark is not giving up, not yet. There are, of course, many other initiatives across Europe. ProPark and Europark collected available capacity building related information through a project funded by the German Federal Agency for Nature Conservation, a keen supporter of capacity building across Europe. Another key action for ProPark is related to protected area capacity building plans. These plans, presenting strategies and actions aimed at strengthening the individual, institutional and societal capacities for protected area management, 
are the long-term path to follow, reducing the ad hoc approaches within the system of protected areas for capacity building. ProPark facilitated the participatory processes of developing protected area capacity building plans in several countries and regions. BFN allowed us to support the development of national level capacity building plans for Croatia and Georgia and a sub-regional plan for Romania and Moldova. Also, IUCN allowed us to facilitate a very interesting process of a regional strategy outline development in the North Africa region. A good national capacity building plan promotes the development of learning organizations, organizations that are capable to adopt holistic approaches to human resource development for protected area personnel, organizations that are combining training with complementary approaches to personal and professional development. The Institute for Environment and Nature Conservation is such a learning organization, having two great champions, Masha and Irina, who were leading the planning process and who are now working hard to implement the plan. We are using the competence approach for all our work in capacity building. That's what Masha wrote to me in an email a few days ago, sharing with me some of the key actions implemented by them from the National Capacity Building Plan. Recommendations were developed for organizational structures and job descriptions for protected area management. Competencies were identified based on the Global Register of Competencies for Rangers and Expert Services. Induction courses were developed and implemented for the Ministry personnel are being planned for ranger and expert services and are supported with train of trainer sessions for professionals in nature conservation from public, private and the NGO sector. Internal capacity building program is being planned for field craft, for field skills needed in nature conservation and conservation management. And the curricula and trainings for Natura 2000 managers and stakeholders are being planned through a new project. Facilitating the development of capacity building plans is a fantastic experience. Some of the key lessons learned in these processes are presented on this slide. Yes, I know, too many words, but please bear with me this time. These are really important findings and I really want to share them with you. But I'm not going to read all this text. I prefer to leave a few minutes for you to read it and hopefully return to this slide when the organizers will share the presentations with you. Training needs assessments are a very important part of the competence-based approach. ProPAR conducted so far general training needs assessments in 28 countries and detailed ones based on the individual training needs assessment in 16 countries. We were very lucky to be part of the team assembled by Mike Appleton to test the training needs assessments developed based on the Global Register of Competencies. Our reports are available at the link presented on the slide and the countries covered with the, these training needs assessments are presented on the map. Last year, within a Life Plus project implemented by Europark and the partners presented on this slide, we developed an online training needs assessment tool for Natura 2000 managers. This tool allows you, if you are Natura 2000 managers, to evaluate your individual co competencies and establish a list of priorities 
for capacity building. I am sure many of you saw this call on the invitation to this conference. Let's get future ready together. Of course, future ready has a special meaning if we think about the pandemic that changed our lives quite significantly for the past few months. Zoom meetings, I'm almost sure, became an integral part of our lives, especially of our professional lives, but perhaps not only. Collaborative online whiteboard platform, Miro or Google Jamboard, or various other online instruments are all present in our lives now, especially if we are trainers or trainees and we were planning to be in some capacity building events this year. But I'm also sure that we are all missing the face-to-face -face events. I know many of us are missing meeting fellow protected area staff, meeting stakeholders, having the possibility to discuss face-to-face, -to, -face, to enjoy sharing experience. I know many of you feel, as I feel now, that this event would have been very different if we would have been in the same place, sharing a glass of wine tonight and our wonderful experiences in the protected areas of Europe. Therefore, I would hope that in the future we will still have the chance to meet, to share face to face, even if we have the best, the most wonderful online tools that allow us to share learning and experience. So, what do we need to achieve the ambitions of the EU biodiversity strategy? I would like to leave you with a few conclusions. We need to develop individual capacity of protected area professionals using a competence-based approach for registered and recognized protected area management occupations, for job descriptions, for individual performance assessments, and for advancement systems. We need learning organizations, organizations that have competence-based human resource management systems. We need capacity building plans based on training needs assessments. We need to develop our curricula and our training events and learning events based on training needs assessments. We need to learn to use new tools. We need to share experience online but I would like to emphasize this. We still need and probably need even more face-to-face -face experience exchange events. We need to meet, we need to connect, we need to learn together, not only online, but also face-to-face -face in the near and in the distant future. I am now closing my presentation with a warm thank you to all of you. I have to confess, it's very difficult to make a presentation in front of a computer without seeing the eyes and faces of those who are listening. But I hope that I was still able to convey some key messages to you about the competence approach, about professionalizing protected area management. And I would like to use this opportunity to say a big thank you to Mike Appleton who made it possible to us, the ProPark team, to be part of a wonderful work, a work of a lifetime on competencies for protected area management. Thank you very much, Mike, and thank you for accepting to answer questions for my presentations also. Wish you all a very successful conference.